This is a video on how to get more accurate uh, Geiger counter readings, and I've got three different methods here. And my first method that I was showing in that other video was to use this plate in order to get a wider surface area. And this little red arrow represents the hot material or detectable particle. Over time, like say over an hour to six hours, if it's raining, you're going to get particulates coming down out of the atmosphere and they will be caught in this plate which is nothing more than a dinner plate just for you know the sake of getting something recorded if there's anything coming down you should be able to get uh, this device the Geiger counter to sound off but here's the problem the background radiation is about 15 clicks per minute it could be uh, 10 clicks per minute if you get a particle in here that's given off one click per minute, and your background radiation giving you uh, 10 clicks per minute, uh, you're not going to know if there's anything in here that's hazardous. So it's kind of, you know, it ain't going to work very well. The other problem, um, there's another way of doing it, and that is to put it up on a pole. If you got it outside, <clears throat> this is actually the way everyone's taking the readings. This is actually worse. I mean, this plate, the plate method is going to be more accurate in getting you something more so than sticking up on a pole or just having a handheld device up on some building. I saw some guy, some magazine editor with, uh, he had a unit in his hand and he was up, he went up on top of a building like he's going to get some reading. Well, here's the problem. You got these particles only when it's raining, they're going to be falling down. Okay. If there's anything in the atmosphere and most of it's probably already come down. Um, and if that thing's not off gas, then it's not going to be able to get anything up into the atmosphere to come down in the rain. So you got to kind of consider all that. So let's say you got a particle falling down 10 feet away from you. Your detector's way over here. It's not going to read it, okay? But over time, as you can see with these red arrows down here, within an hour's period of time, if the rain's bringing it down, you should find something that you can detect in a mud puddle or water on the street, uh, anything that... Uh, near the street or a flat surface with where it's been raining okay you should be able to detect something if your background radiation is 10 and and you go check the ground and you're getting a 25 then you probably could conclude you got 15 uh a level of 15 of exposure there so you basically lift your lift your unit up off the ground you get a 10 reading you put it back on the ground you get a 15 reading you got five okay so there's some contaminants there so you got to be smart enough to you got to be smarter than the device okay but if you want to go to an even more accurate way of getting a good reading this unit over here basically it's the same detector all three of these I'm assuming you're using the exact same detector just a Geiger counter um, so basically your your pickup device is down below and this outer sleeve here is a, as a cone like you would have in a coffee filter the outer sleeve um, could be made out of like a the type of plastic that you could buy at a home improvement place where you can roll this up into a cone and uh, fasten it so that it's watertight and it's just going to allow the water to collect. But this top piece is a mesh, like a wire mesh. And so basically these are the different types of wire meshes in that some of them are tight, some of them are loose mesh, okay? Now what this will do is cause your unit to give a reading of a zero clicks per minute. And if you can get your unit to give a zero clicks per minute because it's being shielded with a Faraday cage, any type of raindrops that come down and you get any type of reading at all, you know that's a contaminant, okay? So these universities that think that you can't get a good reading with this, well, you know, it's not the student's fault. The professor is, you know, it's a little bit of arrogance there. And uh, I don't see them running out and giving you any uh, readings. I don't see the news, you know, giving any, uh, got any students out there giving you some readings and you, on a daily basis. Because you could have, you could have, as the rain falls, you're going to have one rain cloud. And that could be tested separate from the rain cloud that, that comes behind it. So this thing should be tested every day, okay? But if you have, a, let's say you have a Faraday cage grounded to, to, uh, shield out all cosmic radiation so you get you can get a reading of zero before you begin and then as this thing fills with water 
and you're basically going to be able to get an accurate reading. So now when you start getting five clicks per minute, ten clicks per minute, when this thing was shielded at zero clicks per minute, you can uh, be pretty secure knowing that those are accurate readings, okay, and that you're not getting uh, distortion from ambient radiation. And that's the the problem with ambient radiation is that it fluctuates, okay, depending on the time of day and uh, all other factors. I hope this helps, and it's important to be able to get accurate readings so that you can be uh, confident that there's two things you want to find here. Is there any exposure? Number one, that you have to be able to answer that question. And somebody on TV that tells you that it's safe and they don't show you a number and they don't show you the device, they don't show you the charts, they don't show you the spectra analysis, I don't listen to that. I need a number, okay? And you should want a number as well. And there's a lot of people out there that have these devices. They've paid three to $400 for some of them. They're very accurate, and they just need to be set up properly. So I hope this helps, and thank you for watching.